If you stick around in this video, I'm gonna break down everything you saw at the beginning portion of the video and tell you what my methodology and my way of thinking is to clear this restroom here behind me. In a previous comment, somebody asked me how I would work doors with returns on them, and the truth is that I would work those doors the same as doors without returns, the only difference being there's a sense of urgency because obviously the door with the return on it is going to close back on you, which can be problematic. As you're approaching the door, you wanna be able to assess the door so it can help determine what tactics you're going to use to actually get the door open. Things that you wanna look at is whether or not the door is an inward opening door or an outward opening door. That's gonna be determined on whether or not the door is recessed, like this one is inside the threshold or outside the threshold. Another sign that the door is an outward opening door is that you'll be able to see the hinges on that door. You obviously wanna pay attention to whether or not the door is already open. If the door is already open, that's gonna give us maybe some more information before we get there or as we're approaching, and it's gonna allow us to work that door a little bit easier. It's very common to run into doors with their turns on them in commercial locations, especially schools, and especially when we're talking about restrooms because they like to protect the privacy of the people coming and going from the restroom, so it's very common that you're gonna find returns on doors commercial locations, restroom doors, in order to protect the privacy of the people coming and going, although that isn't always the case, but you could assume that you're going to run into a door with a return on it that's attached to a restroom. If we knew that this door was an inward opening door and we knew that the knob side was here, we would wanna set up on the knob side of a hinge door and usually on the knob side of a door that isn't hinged, uh, but particularly on hinge doors because if I tried to open this door from the hinge side on an inward opening door, it's gonna be very problematic. So I can't really even get that door open all the way using, using my hand. It overexposes me to the threshold. And the more times that we have to continuously push on this door to open the door, the more likely that we're gonna meet some type of resistance and give up any opportunity we may have had of a surprise um, and getting guns into the fight if that's what we need to do. Like I said, as you're approaching the door, you wanna be able to assess the door and determine which side is the hinge side. And in this case, we know that it's an inward opening door, but we don't really know what side the door is hinged on because there is no knob to indicate that. So as you're looking at this door here, you see that this wall is running as close as possible or the closest wall to the door. And so we could assume or take an educated guess that, well, we know it's a corner fed room, but we could take a guess that the door is gonna to open towards that wall because most corner fed room doors that are inward opening are gonna open up towards that wall in order to save space. We don't wanna to spend too much time at the threshold and we don't wanna be working the door continuously back and forth, back and forth because we're unable to get it open. And so as I'm standing here trying to work this door with my hand, this is what normally what you see cops doing is trying to do this. And it's very impractical, if not impossible to do. In order to actually open the door, you have to get more center line of the door, push it open. And by that time you're already overexposing yourself. Even if I tried to use the method that I like to use, which is using my foot, it's extremely problematic to be able to do it from this side again pretty much impossible. You have to pretty much square up on the door. Again, overexposing yourself, standing in the threshold to get the door open. And then you have to come back, check that corner. And by the time you're coming back this direction to check this area, that corner was never checked and the door is closing on you. So you're working against the actual mechanics of the door. And so in order to mitigate the problem of getting that wrong, because I think it's a really important thing we need to get right, is what you saw me do is when you come up to the door ever so slightly, you just put your hand on the center of the door and push on the door and you'll be able to get enough information from the door to tell you which side the hinge side is on. So once I have that information, transition over to the knob side, what would be the knob side if there was one here. And again, you could use your hand and you could push it open and you could work it that way. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, as long as you're not overextending yourself to do it. But what I like to do is use my foot because it allows me to keep two hands on my gun. And so I use my foot. And then we start collapsing the room back down. Now there will be times where you work the door and you either didn't know it was hinged or you've been working several doors in that building. And it just so happens that the force that you were using to open up those other doors isn't working on this door and it's hinged stronger and I've run into that. And so, what I advise you to do if you actually work this door and you don't actually get it all the way open either because you didn't know or it was hinged stronger than you thought, instead of now getting in here and, and, and stopping the door and working this, we still don't know if there's somebody behind this corner over here. And obviously that could be problematic or behind the door, that could be problematic, especially by yourself, coming in here and at that point you would pin the door at least to make sure there is nobody behind there. But if the door happens to not 
go to the wall um, and you feel like there's somebody behind us, it's a really bad spot to be in. Um, and so to mitigate that problem, you may have to work the door more than once. And I think that's okay. That's actually what I prefer to do if you run into that problem. And the reason is because we want to systematically eliminate the possible threats as we encounter them. And if we are entering into this restroom and now we have an unchecked area behind us, well, that's a problem, right? Threats in front of us, threats behind us, and we could have mitigated that problem. So if I come up to the door and I don't get it open all the way, I may try to work this a little bit, but at this point here, get the door all the way open, and now we're checking this area, and then we're getting in and holding the door. So once we come inside the restroom, we're confident there's nobody in this immediate area right here. The reason that we don't wanna let the door close is because if the door closes again, we just have to start all the way over. Um, so if that does happen to you, say maybe you're working with somebody who is unfamiliar with this, or um, you just, for whatever reason, don't act uh, and get in there to stop the door, you would just do it again. I let the door close, maybe I thought I saw something, I didn't, come back this direction, get in here, hold the door, and now once I'm inside the door, um, as I start working this corner right here, working this angle, um, I want to, I'm going to have to transition my feet on the door from uh, my left foot to my right foot in order to continue checking this area over here. I'm already confident there's nobody behind the door and I'm either gonna have to hold the door until other personnel come into the room or they're able to hold the door, or I just have to give it up because in order for me to continue checking this area, I have to um, obviously release the door so I can continue to expose myself to try to handle the threats if there are any there. Now, another consideration why you don't wanna get in here and shut the door is you are going to significantly reduce your ability to egress out of here. So if you decide to come in here and, and do, I don't know, like come into this corner and collapse the room down or do whatever and allow the door to close, you start pieing this area here and you encounter somebody with a firearm, that's gonna be very problematic for you to get out of here if you, that's what you need to do. Um, it's not, this isn't a little, this isn't a space that I would wanna be stuck in. And so you wanna hold the door until the last available opportunity so that if you need to bail out of here, you can. So you might be thinking, is this for one man CQB or this is only for one man CQB or if you're by yourself and I'm going to explain to you why this is basically a one man job no matter how you look at it, no matter how you cut it. And so I'm gonna go over what you saw in the original video, or the video in the beginning. So as I'm approaching this door, like I said, I already demonstrated, come up just to be sure on which side the hinge side is on, check the door, get enough information from the door. I know the hinge is on that side. As the door is coming open and I'm collapsing the room back down and I determine that there is nobody there, there's no threat there, or I'm gonna make entry and there's nobody behind the door, I wanna get in there and stop the door. Get in here, hold the door, now I'm focused on this corner right here. I understand if you saw in the video in the beginning, you can see the target in the mirror. That's something that you should actually look for because if you see somebody standing there in the mirror with a gun like this waiting for you to come around the corner, you're probably not gonna wanna go around the corner as long as he's a danger to himself and nobody else probably gonna back out of there and call in some different assets at that point. So I don't wanna let the door close and I wanna be able to hold the door to allow me the ability to egress if I need to and so as I'm pinning the door to the wall, using my back. I don't really need to shuffle my feet necessarily. I can use my back. And then once I have the door on my uh, outside foot uh, from the threat area itself, and I get to a point where I have to now obviously give up the door in order to continue checking, that's what I'm gonna do. And you can, you can do this slow, you can do this fast. Doesn't really matter to me. You could do a slow pie looking for threats. But at a certain point, once it's time to make entry into this other room, you do need to be moving quickly because at that point, the only thing that you have to protect yourself from somebody who's waiting there ready to shoot you is speed itself. So I mentioned that this is basically one man CQB regardless of how many people you have because if I'm over here holding this angle or working this angle, there isn't enough space, especially with kits on, that another person is gonna be able to do anything for me at that point. So as I continue to work around this angle here and I get to this position here, I'm on my own, right? If there's somebody else standing here ready to support me, that's fine, but they're not actually really doing anything because they can't. So at the moment in which I run across over this direction, now they can you know, get their gun up into the fight and if there was an engagement, obviously they would be there to handle that person as they were tracking you over that direction. Hopefully, that's the idea. And then at this point here, instead of me pushing towards the stall at that point, if I'm down there checking it, and obviously if I'm coming back up or I haven't said anything, since he technically has the best angle into the stall, 
he could then push forward and work that, and then you'd be off the gun ready to support him. So it's basically a one-man job. It's not, you're not gaining a whole lot from having another person here necessarily, unless, of course, you uh, believe in running the rabbit and that guy tracking you and him possibly being able to get over here and get on the guy before he gets you. Now I'm just concerned about that space over there um, where the stall is. And so at this point here, especially if you have stalls where there's three, four, five, six stalls, um, which is typical, instead of walking into every single stall, at least at a minimum, first check down below and see if you see anybody standing there. And at least if you don't, you know that the only place they could be is on the toilet itself. Now, what you will commonly see people do is once they approach a stall door is they like to just hit it open as fast as they can. In this case here, again, using whatever tactical advantage we may still have at this point, as we're moving up, instead of disturbing the door, um, because we know there's nobody over here on this side, because we've already checked and there's nowhere for anybody to really be or stand. There's no desks, no, um, nothing to indicate that there's something over there for somebody to stand on. So we could assume if they're anywhere in here, they're actually on the toilet itself. So instead of disturbing the door, continue to work this angle here. I engage this target over here that's on top of the toilet and then continued to collapse that stall down without having to actually move the door at all until I actually had to make entry into that room. Look, I can't really say yet that your support is helping me keep the lights on, but it would be cool if I could. So if you like this content, make sure you're subscribed to the channel, feed the algorithm down below, and let me know what you think about this content.